Hello and welcome to chapter four. These are multiplication facts and strategies. So make sure you take out your chapter four booklet and you'll notice we have our table of contents that goes through the standards and goes through the content of all of the lessons. This is a great kind of warm up page focusing on doubles and doubles plus one in addition making sure equal groups that you have a good understanding of that and if you want to challenge yourself you can look at the math detective on the back is our vocabulary builder these are important words that we will work on in this chapter and some we have already talked about so I will go through this because the math vocabulary is super important so you'll complete the tree map with by using the words with a check. Multiplication properties. The property of multiplication that shows 1 times 4 equals 4. That any number times a number, uh, 1 times any number equals that number. This is called the identity property. So we'll write identity. And I can see there's some blue lines down here. I need to know that the two numbers I'm multiplying together, these are the factors. The numbers you multiply together are factors, and the answer to a multiplication problem is the product. That's an important math term. Now we did talk about this property of multiplication where we can change the grouping and the grouping property is also called the associative property. This is the hardest one for me to remember, but I think of it like I can associate these numbers together or I can associate these numbers together and the parentheses help me. Now, this property that shows three times two equals the same thing as two times three. This property, I think of it as the turnaround fact, but it is officially called the commutative. The commutative property of multiplication. This also works in addition. I'm gonna write here, turn around fact because you can flip those factors in multiplication, just like you can swap the order of the add-ins in an addition problem. Now, these arrows are pointing to these dots. These dots are in rows and columns, and we call these arrays. Okay, those are some important terms for us to know. All right, and we can further understand these vocabulary words down here in the bottom. The blank property of multiplication states that when the grouping of factors is changed, the product stays the same. And that word grouping, it tells me that I use the parentheses, it's the associative property. A blank of five is any product that has five as one of its factors. A blank of five is any product that has five as one of its factors. Now, I didn't read the directions here, so I'm stumbling a moment because I have to look at these preview words. So these are the preview words up here. So it is a multiple, a multiple of five is any product, and remember product is the answer, that has five as one of its factors, and factors are the numbers you multiply together. Lastly, the blank property states that multiplying a sum by a number is the same as multiplying each addend by the number and then adding the products. This is that distributive property. And 
the names of these properties are less important than understanding what they mean. But here's our example. 2 times 8 equals 2 times 4 plus 4. Now 4 plus 4, this is the same thing as 8. We can break it apart. So we can take this 2 times 4 plus 4, and we can do 2 times 4 plus 2 times 4. And the 2 times 4 gives us 8. 2 times 4 gives us 8. So then we can add those two together to get 16. 2 times 8 is 16. So this concept is simpler here, but as you grow as a mathematician, you will see the distributive property will be helpful in your future math endeavors. If you would like extra practice, I know Ms. Cohn had torn out and made cards out of her Chapter 3 vocabulary cards. I know I tend to lose things, so I like to keep them in my book. But we've got the English and the Spanish of all of these math terms. And on the back side is an ex explanation, a definition, and examples. So these are great to hang on to, whether you tear them out and quiz yourself or whether you keep them in your book and just read through them. There is a game you can play to start off chapter four. Guess the word. And this one you will need to maybe tear out your words to play. But you've got your word box here and it's all of these words from your vocabulary page. Okay, so that might be a fun one. And if you would like, you can go to the writing part and choose one idea and write about it. So you have some space to do that here. But the lesson for today is 4.1. So lesson 4.1, multiply with two and four. This can be found on page 139. Our essential question, how can you multiply with 2 and 4? So let's unlock the problem. Two students are in a play. Each of the students has three costumes. How many costumes do they have in all? Now this is something I find tricky when they put a number in word form. Don't get tricked. I've got two students, right? And each of them has three costumes. So here's holding their bag with three costumes. Math is not about art, so this type of sketch is perfect. Now I have to know that what does the word each tell me? Each of the two students has three costumes. So each one, just like I drew it out there. And we have to figure out how can you find the number of costumes the two students have. A sketch helps me see I have two groups, each student is a group, two groups of three. So multiplying when there are two equal groups is like adding doubles. Okay, so doubles, here's a doubles fact, three plus three equals six. This will be the same, but using multiplication, we're going to multiply by two. So here's our model. We're going to draw counters to show the costumes, whatever I have in my little garment bag there. So each student has three costumes, right? So each circle needs three costumes. Two groups of three, you can think three plus three is six. So two is how many groups? This is the number of students. And how many in each group? This is the number of costumes each student has. Yes? And this gives us how many in all? Six. So the two students have six costumes in all. Maybe you thought through this quicker than I talked through it, but I wanted to make sure you saw the steps because we always like to start in math with an easier problem. 
so we can apply the concept to a harder problem later, maybe with more complicated numbers. So now we will try this. Zoom down a little bit. Okay, so 2 times 1 equals 1 plus 1, which equals 2, right? I'm taking this 1 2 times. So 2 times 2 equals 2 2 times. So here's 2 1 time, 2 2 times, and it equals 4. So 2 times 3 equals 3 plus 3. We're going to do 3 2 times to equal 6. We're following this pattern. 2 times 4 equals 4 plus 4, which equals 8. 2 times 5 equals 5 plus 5, which equals 10. These are the doubles facts of addition. I'm going to just put a little plus. And these are the multiplication. I'll just abbreviate it there. We can continue this pattern as we go. So 2 times 6 equals 6 plus 6. And I know 6 plus 6 equals 12. 2 times 7 equals 7 plus 7. It's 2 more than 12. 14. 2 times 8 equals 8 plus 8, which equals 16. And 2 times 9 equals the same thing as 9 plus 9, which is 18. Okay? What do you notice about the product when you multiply by 2? And this is the product. It's also the sum. In addition, we call it a sum. In multiplication, we call it a product. So what do you notice? 2, 4, and I have to follow the line this way because it jumps out. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. Did you notice what I noticed? The pattern, it increases by 2. All right. Let's turn to page 140. page 140 here, and we're going to count by twos. So when there are two in each group, you can count by twos to find how many there are in all. There are four students with two costumes each. How many costumes do they have in all? Let's use our number line. Skip count by drawing the jumps on the number line. And we have four students, so we're having four jumps and they each have two costumes, so we're jumping two each time. So the four students have eight costumes in all. How can you decide whether to count by twos or double? I think this is personal preference. And you can use doubles to, I'm going to use the word double again, double check your multiplication. Okay, so I think it's personal preference. If you prefer adding doubles, you can do that. Or if you want to count by twos and multiply by two, you can do that. You will get to the same answer, right? We've got 4 plus 4 equals 8. 2 times 4 equals 8. You get the same answer, the product or the sum. So let's try an example down here. We're going to use doubles to find 4 times 5. Now, when you multiply with 4, you can multiply with 2 and then double the product. So if multiplying by fours is tricky for you, but multiplying by twos is not, then you can multiply by two and then double, or you can double your double. So four times five. First, we're going to multiply by two. We're going to break this four into two and two. Yes? So we're going to solve it one time here and do two times five, and then we can just double it to get the other one. So here's two groups of five equals ten. 
Now we can double the product. 10 plus 10 equals 20. So 4 times 5 equals 20. I love math because it takes harder problems and it simplifies them. And then that's just like life. You get a hard problem in life, try to break it down to a simpler problem, and then you figure out you've solved your harder problem. All right, let's try a little. We'll share and show down here at the bottom of page 140. We're going to double 2 times 7 to find 4 times 7. So we're using that, uh, was that the distributive property? We can think 2 times 7 plus 2 times 7. That equals 4 times 7. One thing you might start seeing more in third grade is when they flip kind of the part of the equation where there's more work, you might flip those around. All right, back to our problem. So we're going to double 2 times 7 to find 4 times 7. So first we multiply with 2. 2 times 7 equals, here's two groups of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 each. And I like to make a mark on it so I don't lose track. So 7 times 2, or 2 times 7, 2 groups of 7 is 14. Now we're going to double the product. 14 plus 14, I can do that in my head, I don't have to regroup. So 4 times 7 is 28. And I can put that up there too so I can see that. This is the same as this is the same as this. All right, so we could explain how knowing the product for 2 times 8 helps you find the product for 4 times 8 down here in our math talk. So if I know that 2 times 8 is 16, well, I can double 16 to get to 4 times 8 because 4 times 8 is just 2, 2, two times 8. Yep, so 2 times 8 plus 2 times 8, you can double that. So 16 plus 16, and then you know that's 32. Whoops, 32. Yes? All right. Moving on to page 141. I want you guys to, in our video here, I'm going to do the evens. I'm going to do 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, and I'll fill in 20, oops, down here. And then when we get down to the bottom, I will work on 22 with you. And if you want to come to the live one, I'm going to save this one, 24 for live. All right, so you can do on your own the odd ones or come to live and we'll work on some odd ones as much as we have time. So we're going to write a multiplication sentence for the model, right? We have two groups of two. Two times two is four. Yes, I have six times two. I can think two groups of six, so I could think six plus six, right, is twelve. Two times seven, two groups of seven, I'm thinking Seven plus seven is fourteen. Two fives, two groups of five. I'm thinking five plus five. Easy peasy lemon squeezy, it's ten. All right, we're gonna find this product. The answer to two times nine. I'm thinking nine plus nine is the same thing. Eighteen. Number 12, 7 times 2. Oh, it's the same thing up here as 2 times 7, right? That commutative property, you can turn it around. It's easier to do it that way, right? Number 14, oh, we've got a 4. So I could think 2 times 3 plus 2 times 3, right? I could think 2 groups of 3 is 6 plus another two groups of 3 is 6, so 4 times 3 is 12. Okay, we're trying to make sure we can mentally visualize how these numbers break apart.
So four times four, I could think of it as two times four plus two times four, two times four. I could also think of it as four plus four, which is eight plus the same thing, right? I'm gonna double that, which gives me 16. All right, and four times five. I could think of this as two times five plus two times five. And these parentheses, the little lines that are curved and cup the multiplication, they kind of help me think, I'm gonna do this as one part and this as one part and then do this, right? So two times five is 10 plus 10. So four, five, four times five is 20. All right, down here for number 20, I am going to look at this chart. Okay, we're gonna complete this table. So on your own, you can complete the table for the twos. We're gonna complete the table for fours. So four times one. Any number times one is itself, right? So four times two is like, was that up here? We already did four times two? No, we didn't. In my head, I did. Four times two is, think of it as two fours, right? You can think of it as like four plus four. It's eight. Four times three, I did do that up here, is 12. And I can start seeing this pattern, right? I'm just adding four each time. And if you want to think about rolling your numbers, that might help you too. Four, eight, 12, 16, 20, 24. That's how we roll our fours. 28, 32, 36, 40. So four times 10 is 40. That's how this chart works. You kind of go the left side times whatever's along the top column. So the left side times the top. So four times seven is 28. Four times six is 24. All right, now I'm thinking here, hmm, 20 equals two times what? Two groups of what will give me 20? I can split this in half and know that two groups of 10 gives me 20. And we'll save number 24 for our live session. I already know this is getting a little long. And maybe in our live session, we'll be able to jump into some of the unlock the problem on page 142. But for your homework, what do you need to do? Well, I want you to do all of this page, page 142A. And I'm not gonna go easy on you guys. Page 142B. I want you to also do all. There's some great work with the key, great reminders about our tables, some addition, and thinking about a bar graph. In addition to two questions that I want you to try on your own. All right, thank you for doing math with me. Hope to see you at our group on at 11 o'clock.